Yandere Dev is an indie demo developer, creator of the infamous Yandere Simulator. If you're here, you probably saw mentions of his name or one of the many memes featuring his memorable mug. But when you searched him up, you got backhanded by videos longer than his typical workday. TRO, what does it even stand for? The wrong opinion? Yeah, and Kappa Kaiju, with a name like that, what buddy country do you think you're in, mate? Here in Australia, we speak American. Unlike how Yandev treats his fans, I'm not gonna waste your time. So let's stalk senpai. You're a fucking retard sold out. Go fucking kill yourself, dumb shit. I, Eva X, humbly submit a toast. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Yandere Dev, also known as Alex Mahan, was released in 1988, six years after his announcement in 1982. During his teenage years, he made questionable posts on the Gaia online forums, which are actually the only kinds of posts you can make on Gaia. These demonstrated the full breadth of incel behaviour, years before incel was even a commonly used term. How it's on the girls to be nice to him if he comes off as rapey, discussing how girls don't love him because of his looks, and definitely nothing else, and most famously, the pictures showing off his face, and a thread asking if he's ugly. Notably, he also posts about his desire to be in a codependent relationship, where his girlfriend is obsessed with him and heavily relies on him. Hmm, if only someone could make a game about that concept. Now, it is a bit silly to dredge up 15 year old posts for the sake of cancelling someone and it's very likely that he no longer believes a lot of what was said here. After getting a two year associate's degree of arts and animation, interactive technology, hentai masturbation techniques, video graphics and special effects, he had a short stint as a junior game designer at a game company before deciding to spray his seed into the world and go freelance. During this time, he created several game prototypes, one of which was a game named Lunar Scythe, a fighting game concept he created to show off to then idol Mike Zed, creator of Skullgirls. Yandev promptly had his bendy little pinner ripped clean off by Mike Zed and his mates, who were very critical of Alex's game, and thus his emo origin story had begun. Now fueled by anger, Alex set out to create a game that would outshine Mike Zed as he later explained in a 4chan post so edgy that you need protective eyewear just to read it. As you know, all great game projects are based on hatred and revenge. Shigeru Miyamoto famously made Mario to piss off his dad. Alex actually later apologised for the way he acted towards Mike Zed in a rare display of self-reflection and regret. Alex came up with the idea for a high school serial killer game after finding a cheap 3D anime character asset pack, giving it the one-handed sausage salute and then wondering what he could make with it. He pitched the idea to 4chan and the surprisingly positive response he got inspired him to begin development for real. Yandere Simulator, as it was titled, would be a Hitman style stealth assassination game where you play as a Yandere a Japanese anime trope describing a character who has an unhealthy obsession with their love interest or senpai and will do anything from blackmail to murder to milking Patreon donations to stop anyone else from being with them. He created a YouTube channel to document his videos as well as posted regular updates on 4chan. Progress was steady. He was able to quickly implement many core features that he could then show in regular update videos where he gave clear, concise descriptions of features and design choices. By 2015, the free sandbox style debug mode piqued the interest of many large Let Us players such as PewDiePie, Markiplier, Mark Markus Brownlee and Mark Zuckerberg. The unique blend of colourful anime graphics, high school setting, intense violence and sandbox shenanigans made it an instant hit, resulting in an explosion of interest for the game. He created a Patreon with the premise that the debug mode and eventual demo would stay free and you could simply choose to pay for it to come out sooner, in theory. And he quickly built up a decently sized pocky and sex doll fund. Over time, the updates, while frequent, began to become more frivolous and indulgent, adding easter eggs and other unnecessary side modes that did nothing to further the game's core concept and instead only further his erection. 
These updates looked good for YouTube as they had a strong visual component and also kept up the illusion that solid progress was being made on the game. Of course, some people would rightfully argue that he was building the game ass backwards as a game about defeating a series of rivals vying for your senpai's attention didn't actually have a single rival in it until 2020. Surprisingly, for a guy working on an anime girl murder simulator, Alex didn't exactly have the best social skills. The cracks began to show in mid-2015 when he made the first of many videos complaining that part of the reason for the game's long development was due to the excessive amount of time he has to spend answering emails every day. This was one of the first glimpses into his unhealthy desire to defend and justify himself when approached by trolls or critics instead of just, you know, not doing that. It also showed his complete ignorance of the Streisand effect after he demanded that people stop sending him so many emails. So naturally he started to receive infinitely more emails. <laughs> At the time this kind of just seemed like an isolated incident so nobody paid it too much attention. With the Patreon steadily increasing, things seemed good for old Alex. The game was popular, his YouTube channel hit a million subscribers in 2016 and most importantly he focused on the fucking game. Who would have thought that the people genuinely following the development of a game only care about the game and not the tosspot making it? From the start, his plan was to create a refined demo of the game that accurately portrayed what the final product would look like. He would then start a crowdfunding campaign in order to hire a proper programmer to tidy up his shoddy code. He said himself that the code he's written is poorly optimized simply because it's placeholder code for the sake of quickly adding features to the demo. He plans to have this placeholder code refactored by the programmer he hires instead of just, I don't know, programming it properly from the start. While I respect aiming to have a playable demo for your Kickstarter instead of the standard two pieces of concept art and an outline written on a cocktail napkin, most game devs don't also rake in hundreds of thousands of dollars in Patreon money over six years while making the prototype just so they can crowdfund even more money. Like your semen soaked anime body pillow, here's where things start to turn sour. In late 2016, he announced to 4chan his original target audience that he was sick of them and would no longer be posting there. Of course, announcing to 4chan just how much they get under your skin is like telling a competitive Smash player that you're underage and expecting them to behave themselves. Creating a wordy, condescending post announcing his departure instead of just, you know, doing it will be a recurring trend in the events to come. 2016 would also be the year that Yandev really started to go mask off with being a massive flopping chode. After getting frustrated that he kept receiving bug reports from people using a specific mod, he coded the game to throw up this condescending message, explaining why he chose to disable it. A YouTuber named Stickman made a now deleted video critiquing Yandev's choice to block the mod. Not to be a dick like me, but from a genuine place of passion for the game, even going so far as to compliment both it and Yandev in the video. Yandev commented on the video, telling him to fuck off and just overall being a petulant child. When asked to clarify why he acted this way on the subreddit, he doubled down, saying anyone has the right to say fuck off you dumb fuck if they want to. In that case, with your permission Alex, please fuck off you dumb fuck. Doesn't feel very nice, does it? His Patreon earnings peaked in 2017 and seemed to coincide with a two-part video he put out stating the reason the damn game's taking so long is due to him being the lead programmer as well as the art director, music director and upskirt director. However, Alex was worried that hiring a programmer too soon would kill the game's hype as they'd have to spend several months fixing up his three cheese Alfredo spaghetti code and he wouldn't be able to put out any update videos in the meantime. Another solution was handing off development to a game development company, but he might lose ownership of the game, a cut of the profits and be forced to remove some of the more risque features, like exchanging upskirt shots for crucial game tips. That sounds like something I'd joke about, but uh, it's, 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 no, it's not, it's, it's real, it's in the game. You can do that. Like many of his decisions, he put these solutions up to a poll. Of course, his polls are as useless as a change.org petition. He will either go for the least voted outcome, 
if he wants, or put out a blog post recontextualizing the discussion with a new poll if it doesn't give him the outcome he wanted. Like the time he wanted the inventory screen to be your teenage girl character flashing her knickers at the camera. <sighs> okay, never mind. I take back what I said about not dredging up 15 year old incel posts. Working with a company was the least voted option, most likely because he portrayed it as one of the worst options in the video, but he went with it anyway. The company he partnered with was Tiny Build, who are credited with publishing a variety of successful indie games and Yandere Simulator. Their role was to help assemble a team, including a programmer and an exorcist, as well as handling more of the legal contractual side of things and hopefully using their industry connections to help get Yandere Sim unbanned from Twitch. Oh yeah, Yandere Sim was banned from Twitch by the way. Can you guess why? Ultimately, this didn't work out, as he was still deathly afraid of spending the six or so months letting the programmer refactor the code and clean up his mess without being able to put out a new update or feature. This meant the programmer could only work on small inconsequential things, while Yandev worked on adding new features to show off on YouTube. After a massive waste of time for both the programmer and the publisher, Yandere Dev and Tiny Build both decided to split ways. Ironically, his fear about several months of no updates killing the hype was somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy, as the slow speed of development that spurred this partnership in the first place was once again in full swing. Alex continued to update the game, but also continued to get wrapped up in more and more drama. It's no coincidence that his Patreon seems to start declining around the same time as his drama videos release, almost as though people don't want to pay someone who seems to repeatedly get themselves embroiled in nonsense. Now look, harassment is never okay, and if you think that Yandere Dev's behaviour justifies you bullying him, I can tell you now, you are far worse than he is. However, whenever he brings up drama, he always talks about his tormentors as malicious people who just get a kick out of harassing someone, which, while certainly true for some of his aggressors, completely pushes any responsibility off of him. There are a number of things you can reasonably critique him on, both in his game and in his own actions. But the real enjoyment for these trolls comes from his extreme overreactions. From long-winded YouTube videos, to long-winded posts on his blog, to entire pages on his website dedicated to allegations made against him, which I'm sure instills confidence in anyone who visits them that this is a well-adjusted man and competent game dev. As Alex and his adversaries ramp up the cycle of harassment, so too did Alex's rampant censorship. This inevitably only made his situation worse, as the few places you are actually able to talk about the game were not moderated by him, and therefore you could say anything you wanted. A terrifying prospect. Moderation is a key part of any community, but when you start banning anyone being critical, even with constructive critiques like Stickman, you're gonna end up banning far more than you need to. He disabled comments on YouTube videos and even shilled out $3,000 to buy the Yandere Sim subreddit, the unofficial and considerably more popular alternative to his heavily moderated official one, in order to instate his own moderators and delete or ban anything and anyone critical of him. Purchasing a subreddit is actually against the Reddit terms of service by the way. The ban hammer was so hot that people started speedrunning getting banned from his discord server. Through some well optimized routing, the world record is currently at 0 minutes and 0 seconds, so good luck beating that. 2020 was an explosive year for Yandev. Now 6 years into development and the first rival, Osana, still nowhere to be found, some fans decided to take matters into their own hands and begin creating their own fan games, which Yandere Dev didn't exactly take to all that well. One fan game named Watashi no Mono started development in 2017, and in 2019 he was contacted by Yandere Dev. Completely lacking any self-awareness, Alex demanded that Watashi no Mono's dev admit to his fanbase that his game was poorly made, because people were pointing to its quick development speed as proof that Yandere Simulator was taking too long. In July 2020, Watashi no Mono was cancelled. Properly cancelled, I mean, not in the pro Jared sense. This was due to the increased drama around Yandere Simulator, which led to people giving Watashi no Mono attention, not because they enjoyed it, but because they wanted to see Yandere Sim fail. The second fan game controversy came about, well, almost identically, when another developer, 
Dr. Apius created the basic framework for a Yandere inspired game named Lovesick in about two weeks. Many fans, trolls and onlookers saw this as someone creating a Yandere game in two weeks as opposed to the six years Alex had spent on the game thus far. On Yandere Dev's debunk page, he gets incredibly worked up over Dr. Apius supposedly stealing a number of Yandere Simulator's original assets before defending himself for doing that exact same thing when Yandere Simulator was first developed on the same fucking page. A new record! Yandev approached Dr. Apius pretty much the same way he approached the Watashino Monodev demanding that he cease work on the game because of the grief it was causing him. Alex somehow still hasn't quite realized that the fault might not be with the fan games, but with his own development speed. When this conversation was inevitably leaked, many people interpreted Yandere Dev's poor choice of wording to imply he would commit not live if Lovesick continued development, when he apparently meant it would ruin his life's work and well-being. This kicked off the RIP Yandere Dev hashtag on Twitter, resulting in an explosion of users digging up his dodgy past, criticizing him and the game, and sharing a truckload of deep faked memes from his highly exploitable Gaia Online era photographs. Interestingly, while this was many people's first exposure to the Yandev drama, it did little to affect his Patreon numbers compared to when he himself brings up drama, proving once again that Yandev's worst enemy isn't the trolls, it's himself. This brings us to today, after, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a breaking news report right now. This just in, Wang. Good evening. If you want further proof that Yandere Dev refuses to learn from his past mistakes, look no further than the story of my waifu. On the website Kiwi Farms, a forum dedicated to documenting the goings-on of noteworthy online individuals, user Diesel Boogaloo went searching after another user made a joke about Yandere Dev using his Patreon money on love dolls. He stumbled upon a post on a doll forum where a user named Cannot Google Me proudly shared pictures of their new doll and expressed interest in dressing her up in various cosplays. I plan to dress up this doll as all of my favorite anime and game characters. When I'm in the mood to cuddle Yoko Ritona, I'll do it. When I want to kiss Samus Aran, I'll do it. When I want to be intimate with Rei Ayanami, by gosh, I'll do it. When you have a crush on an anime girl, she is called a waifu. This girl will be all of my waifus. So that is why I've decided to name her my waifu. Notably, Yandere Dev is known to be a fan of every game and anime mentioned, especially Samus Aran. Ironically, Can I Google Me was actually very easy to Google, and Diesel Boogaloo found posts by the same user on a number of sites, including strip club reviews from the LA area where Alex is based. Another detail linking Cannot Google Me to Alex is the name he gave his doll, My Waifu. While this was a common name in the anime community, this was also a name given to a character in Yandere Simulator. One whose bio states that she has sworn her heart to an independent game developer living overseas. When confronted about this on Discord, Alex had this to say, No, I don't own a love doll. The accusation is too stupid to even include on the debunk page because there is not even any evidence. Some guy used the popular internet phrase my waifu several years ago is not evidence. And he wasn't wrong, this very well could be the case of two similarly depressing anime fans. That was, until Kiwi Farms user not based or red pilled found the glaring issue in the doll forum's privacy system. If you attempt to reset your password, you need to provide a username and a matching email. An incorrect combination will give you an error message, but a correct combination will give you a confirmation message. One such confirmation message was promptly received after taking Cannot Google Me and checking it against one of Alex's main emails. A few hours later, Kiwi Farms users found this was no longer possible, meaning Alex had received the reset password email and promptly changed the email associated with the account. Unlike every other accusation lobbied against him, Yandev refused to acknowledge this one on his extensive debunk page. Instead, limply alluding to it with the Yandev used the Patreon money to purchase a blank header, 
While some people have critiqued Alex for using his Patreon money for these dolls, the real issue comes from Alex's refusal to learn from his mistakes. He complains about people digging up his old cringy Gaia online posts before turning around and making new cringy doll forum posts. You could argue that he never anticipated for the internet to find these posts, but after everything he's been through, you'd expect him to have learned this lesson as well. But anyway, this has been Justin Wang for the Kudos Ultimate News Team. Back to you. Thanks, Justin. This brings us to today. After being terrified of hiring a programmer and going months without an update, he didn't hire a programmer and went months without an update. Finally releasing the first rival, Osana, at the end of August. Six years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to create a demo of what the game might look like. He now aims to launch the Kickstarter and use the funds from that to hire the team to complete the game. This will likely do quite well as Despite his vocal critics and his obsession with them, the vast majority of his fan base still seem to support him, and IGN will most likely give the game an 8 out of 10. If you like this video about an anime inspired sensational internet personality, consider checking out this video about another anime inspired sensational internet personality who also spreads her ass for money.